Hey everybody, welcome back to my office and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Well, if you've seen the thumbnail, you know what the video is about. And boy, it wasn't a video that I intended to make. And it's not a video that I really want to make. But yes, I had an accident with one of my lenses. Happens to be my 100 f2, which I've had for, well, probably 20, 25 years. I actually bought it when I was shooting film and I was with Canon and it was the only lens that came from the film days to the digital Canon days because it worked and I liked it. I loved the lens. And what happened was the other day I decided it was a Friday. Uh, my studio wasn't open. I decided I'd go to our river bottom here in Lethbridge and I would take some videos of how to shoot with a wide angle lens and so in my camera bag was my 100 f2 and i went down to the river valley i was doing some photography down there i was doing some videos down there and the winds came up and i thought well there's no sense trying to do a video down here with the winds because the wind was just crazy it was it was just so strong which happens a lot here in southern alberta and so I was starting to pack up and my camera bag, I was actually sitting on a bench. My camera bag was beside me and I took the microphone and stuff that I had. I went to put it in the camera bag. I lifted the camera bag up just a little bit and this lens did a nose dive out of the camera bag. And when it hit, I thought it hit on the lens hood. I was sure because it went flying. It broke instantly and it went flying and the lens hit the ground it started to roll i just sort of cringed and i picked it up put it on the camera tried it and it will not focus properly on the camera now it wouldn't even focus manually when i first picked it up but i wiggled it back and forth and i can now manually focus it but for some reason when i put it on the camera the motor inside of it must either be slipping or not strong enough and it will not focus it. So I can still use it in manual focus, but I can't use it in autofocus. Now, I've been doing photography for over 38 years. And in that time, I've only had two accidents and it was actually, the two accidents were in the exact same place, the exact same day, and it had nothing to do with me. I was on some ice in an arena photographing some kids for their hockey pictures. I set up my studio lights. I had my camera on a tripod, which I seldom do. And I had everything set up and I told all the kids and all the parents, when you come out, skate around this way and stop on this spot and I will take your picture. Then immediately skate off the ice and the next person will come on. Well, of course you have to have a couple smart kids in the group. So on comes this one kid and he has to be Mr. Hockey and he starts skating around the ice like he's some sort of a, I don't know, NHL pro. And he comes skating past me, which he shouldn't have even been close to. And he tripped over a cord for one of my lights and one of my big studio lights, which was up about 12 feet high, went crashing to the ground. Fortunately, because the umbrella was secured to it, the umbrella acted as a parachute. And when it hit the ground, the only thing it dented was a little metal ring on the outside of the flash, and it's worked fine ever since. That exact same day, about five or ten kids later, this kid comes on the ice, comes skating around, gets really close to me like he's some sort of a macho kid, trips over my tripod, catches his skate on the tripod, and over it goes with the camera, with the, uh, the lens, the trigger for the flash, everything all on it. I just grabbed it as it hit the ice and I stopped it just enough and it actually hit on the lens hood and it saved it, which was, I was very fortunate. Nothing was wrong with it and that was it. So that, that's the only two accidents I've had in 38 plus years. So I have to say that I'm pretty fortunate, but for it to be this lens, it's a little bit depressing because this lens has a lot of history. I bought this lens to do some sports photography inside. It's an F2 lens, so it's really fast. It's a hundred millimeter. It actually at the time cost me around $800. I think it was $850 that it cost me. So it wasn't a cheap lens. I know it's not worth much today, but it's pretty frustrating. And it had me pretty upset that I was stupid enough to do that. 
Now that brings up why I did this video and what about this video? Why am I talking about this other than to get it off my chest and to try to make myself a little bit calmer? Well, it comes up to what happens when or if you do break something. What should you do? So the very first thing is, is I do not recommend in any way, shape, or form taking your stuff apart yourself. I, I just don't. I, I honestly don't. I don't recommend taking it to a third-party person. Now, I know there are people out there who will fix lenses. And lenses themselves are not near as complicated as digital cameras are. So you, you may be able to find somebody that's able to take the lens apart and fix it. But I do strongly recommend sending the stuff into your manufacturer and getting it repaired. If, and here's the big if, if the lens or if the camera is new enough to justify it. And I get this so often from people. People phoning me up. They have a two megapixel digital camera that they've had for like 20 years. And they say, it broke. What should I do with it? And I want to say quite point blank, throw it in the garbage and buy a new one. But they say, who can I take it to to get it repaired? And it's like, there is nobody that you can take it to that I would trust to get it repaired unless you're going to send it back to the manufacturer. And just the other day, I went online to the Canon website here in Canada to see, and it says $195 to send it in to have it checked out, blah, 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 plus shipping, plus shipping back. And then on top of that is whatever the repair is going to cost you. So figure that this is probably going to cost me three, four, maybe even $500 by the time all is said and done. And I can go out and buy another lens if I needed it and replace this, especially with digital cameras. If your digital camera is several years old and there's more generations out there, don't waste your money on getting the digital camera repaired. Because guess what? You're just putting good money after bad to get it fixed. Whether it's a shutter that's gone or whatever it is, if it's that old, don't spend the money. Now, I have sent one of my 70Ds, and I don't know which one it is of the ones that I currently have, in to get the shutter replaced. It cost me, I think it was 285 bucks to get the shutter replaced, and the camera's fine. Why did I do it? Because I use my 70Ds a lot, and they work perfectly. And the next best camera for that was going to cost me at least $1,400. So I said, well, a couple hundred bucks as opposed to $1,400, it was worth it. But if your camera's only worth a couple hundred bucks, and if you can get a better camera for a few hundred bucks more than that, it's not worth it for you to go out and get it repaired. It would not be worth it for me to spend two, three, four hundred bucks to get this lens fixed just to have it sit here or possibly sell it in the near future for three hundred or four hundred dollars. It just doesn't make sense. So watch that. If your gear is old, if your gear has it's replaceable, replace it. Don't send it in to get it repaired. And if you are going to get it repaired, like I said, send it in to the manufacturer. Now, I've heard some people say about insurance. Well, I'm going to talk about what I found here in Canada. It may be different around the world, but I've looked into getting equipment insurance here in Canada. May, the, the best, the absolute best deductible on here was $1,000 on any accident. So this lens, which isn't even worth $1,000, I'd have to spend $1,000 for the deductible to get this lens fixed. Now, I've heard people online, I've seen them online, I've read their posts from people saying, oh, I have this and my deductible is only $25 and I drop a camera every year or so and get a brand new camera out of it. I think they're pretty full of it themselves and I don't think that's really true. It may be, I don't know, I haven't checked into it enough. I do know, like I said, here in Canada, it's just not worth it. I do know all my personal insurance for the business here, the studio insurance, that I do have an accident policy on it. But again, it's a $1,000 deductible. Not worth it for this lens. Now, if I dropped a camera, a flash, a lens in one go and it was just $1,000 deductible to get everything fixed, yeah, it, was probably, it would probably be worth it. But just for the lens, not worth it. So what can you do to prevent accidents? Well, it comes down to probably the most basic thing in the world. Take your time. Just slow down. And I admit, 
a little bit of it was my fault because I was, yeah, okay, it's hot, it's getting windy, it's, uh, da, da, and I just sort of, yeah, and I, I know exactly when it happened and how it happened. I, I can play the moment over a thousand times, and it was me just going a little bit too fast. I didn't zip up one of the compartments that should have been zipped up, and it just happens. So slow down when you're dealing with it. Slow down when you're handling your equipment. The other thing that I could have done definitely different and this only happened this one time and I actually was sitting on a bench. Usually I put my camera bag on the ground. I've done it for years. It's been something that in the back of my mind, I, I just did it constantly. I always put my camera bag on the ground and took my lenses out of the camera bag when it was on the ground because if anything should fall out, it doesn't have very far to fall. And I've done it constantly over and over and over again, except guess what? That one time, Friday, thought, hey, I'm sitting on the bench. May as well pack up while I'm sitting on the bench. Why put it on the ground? And yeah, it came to bite me. So until next time, I'm going to continue using the lens on manual focus. I may actually use it as a studio lens and set it up. It, it's still perfectly sharp. Nothing cracked in it. The every, All the glass is fine. So I may still use it as a studio lens and just shoot it on manual focus or occasionally just take it out and use it on manual focus outside. But yeah, it's pretty frustrating. So until next time, get out there and take some pictures. Be careful when you're handling your lens and I'll talk to you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.